Hey everybody, it's Eric from epautos.com, your libertarian car guy, and I'm going to do a quick walk around here of the 2018 Mercedes C-Class Sedan Hybrid. Don't buy this car for economical reasons, that's just silly. Uh, you're paying more than $7,000 above the price of the standard issue C-Class Sedan to get the hybrid drivetrain, and you're already looking at a car that's uh, in the mid-high $40,000 range regardless. So if you're worried about gas mileage, really, you shouldn't be shopping a Mercedes luxury sports sedan regardless. But there is a really good reason to consider buying this car versus the standard non-hybrid version of uh, the C-Class sedan. And that is that you get big block V8 torque out of the combination of the uh, little 2 liter turbo gas engine supplemented by the power of the battery pack and electric motors. The total combo is something like 444 foot-pounds of torque. And just to give you a little bit of perspective, I'm going to go in here briefly and take a quick look at my great pumpkin, which uh, those of you who follow my stuff are already familiar with. This is my 76 Trans Am, and it has the last of the really, really big V8s, 455 cubic inches of V8. That's 7.4 liters in modern speak. And the torque output of that gigantic V8 is comparable to the torque output of this car with its little four-cylinder engine. And the way they behave is actually startlingly similar with that much torque on tap. And by the way, it's rear-wheel drive. It's not all-wheel drive. Uh, so another commonality uh, with the Trans Am is that it, it leaps forward, uh, a slight depression of the throttle, and the front end feels like it's going to raise up off the ground. Mercedes, of course, does not tout that. They tout that it averages 30 miles per gallon. and. Um, more inscrutably, uh, they also post something like, I don't know, 70 or 80 EMPGs, and that's really hard to, uh, to kind of uh, to, to explain, to parse, because it represents a number that's uh, arrived at by uh, figuring the gas mileage versus the electric mileage. This is a plug-in, so you can plug the thing in and you can run on the batteries uh, for about 8, 9, 10 miles, depending on how you drive, and as fast as 80 miles per, 80 miles per hour. Also, the, um, the gas engine will actually shut off under light load conditions at highway speeds. So depending on how you drive, you know, you can really eke uh, a decent amount of fuel economy out of the thing. But again, that's hardly the point. The thing that makes this car enjoyable and the reason that you're spending 40-something thousand bucks for this thing is because it's a beautiful Mercedes that has the power of a big block V8 driving the rear wheels. Um, it's a fairly small car overall, but it's not nearly as small as the CLA uh, Benz, which has that infamous, well, it's beautiful, coupe-like styling, but uh, the downside to the coupe-like styling of that car is that you've got an extremely tight back seat. I think it's uh, 27 and a half inches of back seat legroom versus 35, 4, if I'm remembering correctly in this car. This one actually has a viable back seat. It's a bit tight up front for a tall driver with the sunroof, but uh, I'm abnormally tall. I'm 6'3". Most people are not 6'3". If you're under 6 feet tall, you probably won't have any issue with it. Um, it's got a beautifully finished interior um, that, that uh, frankly, uh, is very comparable in many ways to what you get in something much more expensive, like the E-Class or the S. Notice the quilted leather seats. Notice the high-end Burmester audio, which, by the way, is superb, in my opinion. And I'm not a super audiophile, but in my opinion, um, the only system I found in a new car that's better is the Meridian system that uh, Jaguar Land Rover offers. But this is really top drawer. Um, same floating iPad touchscreen. See if I can get it, get it to light up here so you can see it. Oops. So you've got that pretty touchscreen. You've got the same kind of mouse input. You've got the same really kind of sort of retro 1920s Art Deco looking themes with the, um, the ball type vents and the pewter brush nickel accents. And then, now this is subjective, but I personally like having a, uh, an analog gauge cluster rather than an LCD flat screen cluster. Your mileage might vary on that. The only thing about the Benz uh, functionally that I will, I don't know if it's a criticism, but it's something that you should be aware of uh, if you've not dri driven one of these cars and you're going to go for a test drive, and that is that Benz uses this stock mounted controller here to select the gear. So you can see it's got park, neutral drive, and so on. And you engage it by tapping it down or tapping it up. 
to get the range that you want. The problem with that is that in most cars, uh, the, um, oh, come on, ease off. Uh, the problem with that in most cars is that on this side of the steering wheel, uh, the stock over here on most cars is usually the windshield wiper. So you may inadvertently try to operate the windshield wipers when in fact you're operating the gear shifter. Now luckily Mercedes has a cutout in there so that if the vehicle's moving and you inadvertently throw the, the stock up for reverse while you're driving 60 miles down the road, it's not going to go into reverse and blow up the transmission. But it does take a little bit of getting used to. Over here on the left side is where you'll find your um, your windshield wiper controls. So barring that and the fact that you know the headroom's a little tight for a big tall geek like me, uh, this is a really neat car. Uh, I'm not normally a huge fan of hybrids, frankly, because I don't think they make a lot of sense. They're technically interesting, but whether they make economic sense, at least uh, now, given that gas is pretty inexpensive, uh, it's hard uh, for me to understand uh, how they make um, sense in terms of saving you money overall, keeping in mind the cost of the car itself, not only the miles per gallon that it gets. Uh, one other little sidebar before I quit, you'll see I've got our EP Autos magnets here on the uh, sail panel of the car, because this is steel. The, uh, the C, like a lot of modern cars, uh, uses a lot of aluminum to cut down on weight, so the trunk lid, unfortunately, is, well, not unfortunately, it's made out of aluminum, but it's unfortunate for our EP Autos magnets, because you can't stick a, an EP Autos magnet on the trunk lid of a Mercedes. Anyway, I will have more up at epautos.com, uh, and I'll be on the radio tomorrow, incidentally, at 9.35 um, a.m. East Coast time, uh, talking about a number of things, including the, uh, the announcement that just hit the news that Trump is thinking about jacking up the federal tax on gas by 25 cents, which would more than double the current federal tax on gas. Uh, pretty disappointing. Anyway, thanks for viewing, and come on down to the site and post your comments, thoughts, good, bad, etc., and uh, we'll catch up with you again soon.